Yesterday marked the 20th anniversary of the Bali bombings. Memorial services were held in Bali and Australia for the 202 people killed in the terrorist attack. Minister of Maritime Affairs and Investment Pak Luwit wants a 10-year visa. 10 years? Yes, you heard it right. Stay tuned for more details. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is October 13th, 2022, and my name is Bruce. What's the weather like today? Well, <laughs> finally have some good weather. It is slightly cloudy, but breezy, 10.5 kilometers per hour. The temperature is a very pleasant 29.9 degrees Celsius, and humidity is down to 62% after the 70s, mid-70s for the last few days. Down to 62 is welcome. So I hope wherever you are, the weather is as lovely as it is today here. So the big story is the memorial ceremonies for the 202 people who were killed in the terrorist attacks in 2002, October 12th. And Park Luhut coming up with... <laughs> A 10-year visa? Let's take a look at the numbers. The numbers, a problem again. My usual f official source for numbers, I don't know. They're not keeping up to date for some reason. The numbers that were listed that I found today are two days old, and they're so blurry that I can't read them. I don't know if it's because of the cataracts or if it's just blurry, but I could not read them. I did find some new national cases for yesterday in Indonesia. 2028, found at a completely different site, but had nothing else there. And so, and so 2028, uh, that's looking good. And well, we're going to hope that the numbers in Bali are equally as good. I'm still working on finding new source for numbers and well, hopefully that will work out. Let's get started. Mourners mark 20th anniversary of Bali bombings. Hundreds of mourners and survivors commemorated on Wednesday the 20th anniversary of the bombing that killed 202 people. Grieving families, attack survivors, and representatives from several embassies attended a more memorial service in the popular tourist hub of Kuda, where Al-Qaeda militants detonated bombs at a bar and nightclub on October 12, 2022, and later a bomb was ignited as well at the American consulate. A candlelight vigil was held at the monument built meters from the site of the blast by victims' family members to mark Southeast Asia's deadliest terrorist attack. Many of the people killed were foreign holiday makers from more than 20 countries. Australia had the biggest loss with 88. The Australian Prime Minister told the memorial service in Sydney on Wednesday that the horror of the bombings was swiftly countered by incredible acts of self-sacrifice and bravery. During the memorial, 88 doves were released, one for each Australian killed. The Prime Minister said Bali bombings had left a permanent mark on Australia's national identity in a similar fashion to the devastating Gallipoli campaign of World War I. In Bali, the Australian Council had also held a memorial service attended by the Ambassador to Indonesia, Penny Williams, and Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs, Tim Watts. Relatives and survivors held a moment of silence before laying flowers and wreaths in the consulate's memorial garden. President Jokowi planned to do a video address with family members. I don't know if that happened or not. This story didn't update that. And former Prime Minister John Howard is also going to deliver a speech. In Canberra, Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong attended a memorial service with Indonesia's Ambassador Siswo Pramono. The Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister in a joint statement said, we recommit to ongoing work shared by Australia and Indonesia to counter the scourge of violent extremism. And here's something I wasn't aware of. According to this article, the number of Australian victims is said to be the hallmark of the special detachment 88 anti-terror, Densus 88, the elite anti-terrorist group of Indonesia. And more, Prayer of Peace marks 20th anniversary of Bali bombings. The leaders of six religions led a prayer for peace to mark the 20th anniversary of the Bali bombings. According to Kuda 
Community Empowerment Institute Chairperson Putu Adnana. He said, we hold this prayer of peace from Bali for the world. Hopefully our prayers can bring an atmosphere of peace to Indonesia and Bali. We invite leaders across religions to lead prayers for the victims and families of the Bali bombings. In addition to the leaders of the six recognized religions in Indonesia, Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, Catholicism, and Confucianism, spiritual figure Gede Prama also attended the prayer meeting to spread the message of forgiveness, release pigeons, and spread flowers. He said, today we are echoing peace so that we can respect each other and we are all kept safe from human tragedy. This year, we also invite artists to organize the event into a prayer for peace. In addition to survivors and families of victims, prayers were also offered for governments and countries experiencing war, as well as for the success of the G20 summit. Adyana said, we hope that prayers of peace offered in Bali can be heard throughout the world. Pak Luhut, long-term visa. Valid for 10 years. What? Coordinating Minister for Maritime Affairs and Investment, Pak Luhut, is currently working on a long-term visa plan. It could be 10 years. It could be five to 10 years, as it says a little later in this uh, story. The discussion of the visa with a validity of period of 10 years was carried out in a limited meeting in Jakarta. And along with that, there was a discussion about immigration simplifying the visa process. And meetings are planned this week to discuss this issue further. Pak Luhut told the president that he wants to have a meeting this week discussing the possibilities for visa from five to 10 years for certain people, people with qualifications in certain fields, not everybody. What certain fields? Well, that will be one of the things to be discussed. In addition to the long-term visas, Pak Luhut is looking at global citizens age 60 and over with an income, well, this article says an income of more than 1.5 trillion US dollars. So there is something wrong there. Pak Luhut said senior citizens have a potential to become a huge market with a greater ability for spending. And then of course, there is the digital nomads. Pak Luhut said, for example, in global finance in Indonesia, digital nomads are now the second largest in the world in Changu. As anybody who watches this channel regularly knows, I think Changu is well, some other universe, not exactly Bali, but not, not Bali either. But it seems to be the place of choice for digital nomads. And I think that's great to keep them down there and not up here. The government's been working on a long-term visa plan since early 22. Long-term visas are believed to be able to improve the quality of tourism in terms of length of stay and the amount of money that people spend, because of course that's the big thing. With a better quality of tourist visits, it's believed that the economy of the community around the tourism location will also be boosted. So will a new visa be announced in the near future, a long-term one, and if so, what kind of fields, what kind of requirements are going to be necessary. Countries around the world now are looking at this, scrambling to bring in, well, the digital nomads for one thing, but also senior citizens, especially countries that have a lower cost of living, looking at bringing in senior citizens from the U.S., from Australia, Canada, Europe, and Asia. And this is the next Story. Hospitality company develops retired tourism. A hospitality tour and travel company, Wiskwakan, in Singakarta village in Ubud, is developing retirement tourism. They're going to be targeting Japanese senior citizens. According to the director of PT Manuk Dewata International, Idewa Gede Ambara Putra Manachika, he said enthusiasm for foreign retired tourists to settle in Bali is quite high. And this is an issue that I've been talking about with a friend of mine from Ubud, Roy, for a long time. We were discussing retirement villages my way back when. And so apparently this company now, this Wiskwakan group, has construction, real estate, and hospitality businesses all under one management roof. And so they're going to bring in Japanese tourists who are retired and want to live in Bali on a long-term basis. He said retired tourism will create employment opportunities for special nurses, for the elderly, household assistants, drivers, gardeners, pool people, 
and other professions as well, cooks, whatever, cleaners. It's also believed that the agricultural businesses can trigger a quality agricultural production process because retired tourists will need more organic agricultural products. I don't know why they would need them, maybe want them. I'm up there in age and I don't really care if my food's organic or not. For me, food is food, but that's just me. And retired tourism, he said, also offers the concept of wellness to bring harmony into life, not just achieving physical health, but the integration of mind, body, and spirit, he said. They will achieve true health in a long life in a state of happiness. He said Japanese are a good target group because they usually live in nursing homes away from their families. The numbers could be in the thousands. Also, Pakdewa Ambara Putra said retired tourists are categorized as an environmentally caring tourism segment. It means they won't be driving their motorcycles around in the middle of the street doing wheelies and burning up rubber, as we're going to see in the last segment today. And so it means that the more rustic settings around Bali would be ideal for these kinds of tourist facilities. Retired tourism is in close synergy with environmental and cultural preservation programs, he added. The plan is that in December 2022, they're going to accept, this group is going to accept 10 retirees from Japan for a long stay. He said, we've already prepared accommodation, including all needs and services. The region of Gyanyar, the head of the Gyanyar Regency Tourism Office, Imade Raka, expressed his appreciation for the presence of the group and said that retired tourists from the records of the tourism office are one of the potential markets. And he said, in fact, many, <laughs> many retired foreigners stay and even die in Guinea. Okay, I'm not sure that you, this is going to be a selling point. Come here, stay, and die here too. But uh, who knows? So are we going to see some businesses focused on that? It could be a big change in quality of life. As he said, there are people in nursing homes, a lot of the countries now, Japan, Korea, where used to be like in Indonesia, where you have an extended family and old people are respected and taken care of. Now, if you've got mom and dad both working and kids in school, old people sometimes are just shuffled off into a retirement home because there's just not room in the house for them as you live in smaller and smaller apartments. And so this would be an option. Will this become popular, favorite? I don't know. Something interesting to think about and see how it develops. And some more on tourism. Garuda Indonesia return service Makassar Dempasar PP flights. As you know, if you've watched this channel, I love Garuda, love flying Garuda. And Garuda started on October 7th, last Friday. The reopening of this route is part of the company's efforts to meet the community needs for air transportation accessibility, which connects the two largest aviation hubs in eastern Indonesia and central Indonesia. The Makassar Dempasar flight route will be served three times a week. Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays using B737-800. Flight number GA621 will depart from Sultan Hassanuddin International Airport at 6.30 in the evening and will arrive at Bali International Airport at 20.05. Flights from Dempasar will be served with flight number GA620 and depart from Igusti Nurarai Airport at 20.50 and land in Makassar at 2215. And if you have not been to Makassar, it's a pretty interesting city. So Garuda is taking advantage of these new domestic routes or old domestic routes that they're reopening. And that was part of the plan for them to focus more on domestic flights and not international flights. And according to the president director of Garuda, this is optimizing opportunities for the domestic market especially routes between hubs, so as to provide a more seamless choice of flight schedules to connecting destinations and diverse places. So good news if you're a Garuda fan. And here's something that's gone viral and has people upset. And the, the police got involved in this finally. Viral paid entrance tickets, Nagi Village, Ubud, clarifies through social media. So there was a video that went viral and was uploaded by a motorcyclist uh, Angelan Desa Adat Nagi in Ubud Gyanyar, 
who said that he was had to pay for a ticket to use part of the road. And well, it, it attracted the information of netizens and the Bali police as well, who went to investigate. Now you remember back, how long ago was it when they were charging up in Bangli to use the road? And this was a main road. This was a big public road. Now, village officials here said, this is not a public road. This is a private road. We built this ourselves. This is in the village. Village people built it. There is a list of investors right here, people that were involved in this. And so we have every right to charge people to use the road. According to village official, the vehicles that are ticketed for using the self-surface road as only vehicles going to hotels and villas that do not yet have a road use cooperation contract. The ticket is not valid for hotels and villas that already have cooperation. So apparently there are a number of villas here and hotels and the local authorities of the Banjar uh, has asked for some donations for building this and I guess some some places donated and some places didn't and so they said if you're going to the places that didn't donate you're not using the road without paying for it. Everyday residents in Pachalang of the Nagi traditional village take turns guarding <laughs> the entrance the intersection of <laughs> the Banjar Nagi to the Kamandalu Hotel and investors Suppliers and drivers who aim to go to the villas that do not cooperate will be charged 5,000 rupees for motorcycles, 20,000 for cars and trucks, 100,000 rupees. And the police went and talked to people and, well, I haven't heard that they've been forced to stop yet. So if you are in that area, I guess you might be paying if you're going to one of these villas or the hotel. Mm, so what do you think about that? And as I said in the last video, it looks like the rainy season is coming. It's been really dark today. Right now it's lightened up some, very cloudy. Uh, we had some rain yesterday again, so yeah, it looks like it. And entering the rainy season, Bulaleng BPBD starts anticipating. So the Regional Disaster Management Agency, BPBD, uh, Bulaleng has started carrying out plans to be ready for disasters with the upcoming rainy season. Why? Because we get flooding and landslides a lot here. They're hoping to minimize excessive losses one of the things they'll be doing is implementing outreach programs to areas that are considered prone for natural disasters. Secretary of BPBD in Bululeng, Inyoman Mawan, said that he carried out socialization and education to people living in areas such as Gitgit, Panchasari, Galungan, Lumuki, and Gorogak. And you get landslides, especially I know in Panchasari, Wow, I've seen plenty of landslides there in Geekit as well. Really go down to Grogot in that area to the west of us here. In addition to socialization, the Bulang Regency BPBD also formed disaster volunteers in the villages to be ready for the rainy season. Prevented measures are being taken, such as cleaning drainage ditches, pruning trees that are prone to fall, and there's even a rapid response team that has been organized who will be on standby 24 hours a day with 25 personnel available. Dr. Mawan hopes that the community will always be aware of potential disasters until the peak of the rainy season, which is predicted to occur between December and January. But if you remember the last few years, if you've been here, you know, it rained and rained and rained a lot longer than January. Uh, the saying here in my compound anyway, is that the rainy season ends after Chinese New Year. Boy, it was raining up until what, May? I don't know, I have to go back and look at some videos uh, from that period, but it rained for a long time. The rainy season and extreme weather events, more and more frequent and flooding. As you know, right out here in front of my house, there's the ocean, and so we are prone to flooding. And we started getting the house ready for the rainy season as well. And a few videos ago, I talked about the three bridges under repair on Jalan Gatsutsubroto in Dempasar, and that, one, that there was a collapse of one of the bridges. Well, 
Here's a follow-up. Regarding the collapsed bridge project in Ikatsu, East Gatsu, Bali police say this. So they went to see what happened, and apparently the material that collapsed was not the main project material. The only thing that collapsed was the construction material for the temporary bridge that is being used while the main part of the bridge is being worked on. The police inspector said that's not the project, it's a temporary bridge. There's no problems with the main project. He explained that the collapse that happened was just an ordinary fill-up soil repair. At that time, the repair process took several hours and traffic had to be diverted. He said, nothing collapsed. We carry out repairs of temporary fill that had fallen into the water because it rained last night. Of course it did. Construction should have been done a long time ago. The rainy season is here. Why are we constructing things? Well, I'm not constructing things. Well, actually, I am constructing things. And hopefully, they're almost done. And we have to finish up with a Boule behaving badly story. And this one, what an idiot. This video is all over social media. And what is it? It's some Australian guy driving around in circles on a motorbike yelling, what happens in Bali stays in Bali. Burning rubber. I'm assuming this is not his bike and poor guy that owns it. So according, and this has hit international news. The reputation of Australian tourists on the party island of Bali has taken yet another dive with a video of a tourist doing a burnout on a scooter sparking fury. The person doing the filming, laughing, bystanders did not look impressed at all. And you can just do a quick Google search and you will find this video very easy to find. So in addition to burning rubber, of course, he's blocking traffic. And so there's people looking there and people making comments as well. The clip on Instagram got a lot of comments. Kook, uh, <laughs> dickhead, no helmet and shit tattoo combo. Shit tats, no helmet and TNs are bound to happen, really. He should rent a brain instead of a bike. <laughs> Somebody said Bali should institute a mandatory tourist fee. Visa IQ test requirement. I'd be in favor of that. Another one said, not even Australians want this guy back. Another said, this kind of people should be deported and banned for at least two years. None other than Nilu Jelantic commented on this. She found this as well. And on her Instagram feed, garbage makes pollution and damaged motorcycle. Imagine paying rent of 50000 Rupee per day, but the motorcycle costs at least 18 million and it's treated like this. Imagine if it's broken, how much will the owner cover? Bali needs tourists, but not this type of asshole owner of DK A464QD. If you rent to this tourist, please check the condition of your bike. What gets into these people to do this kind of stuff? You've got idiots like spray painting walls and taking videos of themselves. You get this guy driving in circle, people naked, people taking naked pictures next to sacred trees, sitting on chairs in temples, peeing on temple walls, doing it in sacred forest. I mean, yeah, let's bring in more and more and more tourists. And so we have these crazy boules behaving badly. We're looking at the possibility of a global recession, according to the IMF and some people in Bali some observers of the tourism scene, some academics, some people in the business, the tourist business are saying, let's not be picky about our tourists because they might run out if there's a global recession. The question is, quality or quantity? Can you have both? I don't know. What do you think? And that is it for today. Sad day yesterday, We're hoping for a better present and a better future. I appreciate everybody that leaves a comment, the views, and gives a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm. And a single edge of snippets will be up tomorrow. And on Monday, there will be another cooking video up. And this time, it's tempeh. And so, non-meat. And I ate it, and I actually liked it. I really don't like tempeh usually, but this one was very, very good. So take a look up here, and that's Sue's channel. Subscribe to the channel, and then you will get videos every week about how to cook Indonesian food. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe, and I will see you 
on Monday. Have a great weekend.